we go then, folks. We're getting a bit of retro unboxing and review action going on on the channel today. This here is a McFarlane Toys 3D animation from Japan 2 edition of the Kaneda and motorcycle from Akira. And this has been, well, like many of you collectors out there, I'm sure you've all got that little kind of collector's niche thing that captured your imagination over the years and you've just collected up anything and everything that you can in relation to the particular property that has caught your eye, whether it be a film, a cartoon, a comic book, etc, etc. And Akira is one of mine. Fell absolutely head over heels in love with the film when I was a teenager. Uh, I was just young and pretentious enough and pseudo-intellectual enough to really appreciate uh, not just the quality of the animation, the drama of the action, but also the depths, the layers that the film had to communicate. And over the years, I've collected anything and everything I can get my hands on in relation to Akira. And it is quite a limited pool of merchandise. So I've got some of the other McFarlane action figures that were from the early 2000s. Uh, I've got the little capsule toys. The, uh, I think they're called Gashapon. Hapon. I don't, I'm probably pronouncing that wildly incorrectly. Button badges, t-shirts, posters. I've got the VHS, the DVD and the Blu-ray edition, uh, the graphic novels, of course, got loads of stuff. Uh, in fact, when I was a student at university, one little corner of my dorm room was like a little shrine to Akira and the work of Katsuhiro Otomo, using these McFarlane figures as one of the kind of decorative pieces. And so I've always wanted one of these. I've always wanted one of these Kaneda on motorcycle uh, figures. But back at the time, as a student, limited budget, didn't really have the money to pick one up. I mean, I didn't have the money for the items that I did pick up. But I scraped by, but I couldn't quite scrape by enough for one of these. And then it became discontinued, harder, harder to find. I saw it at a few collector's fairs, but the price tag was just far more than I was willing to pay. And then on eBay the other day, I was doing my little list of regular kind of collectible checks for things, my little white whales that I've been searching for through the years. And one of these was knocking around at a very reasonable price. So I punted the bid on, uh, made a bid and... Just forgot about it. And then seven days later, lo and behold, I got the email saying you won. So nobody else bidded on it. I didn't get bid up and paid. Well, put it this way. The, the guy who sold it to me was probably disappointed with the price it went for. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, one of my little white whales, one of my little collector pieces that I've had my eyes on for 20 plus years now is finally in my hands. And look at this mint in box. Sealed, still got the tie wraps and everything, so very excited. So let's take a look at it. Um, it's a pretty standard McFarlane Toys kind of action figure fair. Got the open window on the front showing off the goods inside. The uh, artwork is all Akira related. Here's the film's logo. Here's some a little kind of headshot of Kaneda in a sort of animated cell style way. The back there is all advertising for other McFarlane's 3D animation from Japan 2 range. So we've got a couple of the other Akira figures there. I've got both of those. Although I can't find that one. I don't know where it is, what box it's in, but I can't track it down. Ghost in the Shell, the Soul Taker, Tenchi, and Armitage 3. Um, so just, yeah, just advertising more of the wave than the bottom. Advertising the DVD and VHS release of the film. I mentioned that earlier, actually. Uh, I've got both those editions, the tin and the DVD, because, you know, why have one when you can have two, I suppose? And then just advertising some of the other McFarlane lines that were available at the time. Clive Barker's Tortured Souls, not really a horror guy, me. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 and Movie Maniacs. Uh, some of these look really good, actually. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. All the legal bollocks over here. Uh, and that's about it of note. The sides are just more pictures of the Canada on his motorcycle. So let's get this open, shall we? Uh, I pre-sliced the tape on. Yeah, there we go. That's the side. So only one of these sides opens up. Let's get my fingers under there. I've already cut the sellotape. Ah, no. It's, it appears that you have to go in from the top. So let's do that, shall we? Uh, oh, more tape. Bloody hell. Tape for days on this. Right, here we are. Pop that up there. And lay it down on its side and slide it out like so, I think. Right, hang on, going off camera for a minute. Oh, bloody hell, come on. Holy shit. All ah, right, here we go. Hey, there we are. I got him. I got him out. 
All right, these are like proper classic tie wraps. All right, do the do my twizzly thing. Okay, everyone sit quietly while Chris twizzles these tie wraps loose. All these anti-shoplifting measures all add up to also be anti-Chris collecting out of box measures as well. I am so confounded by this stuff a lot of the time. Hey, I'll tell you what, Christmas Day's coming up. I, I can't imagine how much of this stuff I'm going to be dealing with on the 25th of December. Not for me, mind. I'm talking about for the kids. Well, that was entirely boring and laborious, but they should come out now. So I've just gone through that main box section, only to discover that this plastic uh, mount inside the window there, the figures tie wrapped to that too. I, I, they obviously had a high level of concern uh, for figure shoplifting or it falling loose in packaging or something. So give me another minute. Oh my God. And another one. Under <laughs> What is all this about? There was obviously some kind of uh, like ner some nerd e epidemic for shoplifting action figures out of in packet in stores or something. Because Jesus, oh wow, these rubber ones—they've they, been so long that they're just crumbling in my fingers. Jeez, right, holy crap, right, finally made it, finally made it. That wasn't boring and laborious and messy at all, he says, hashtag sarcastically. Oh, wow. The original receipt from Forbidden Planet in London dated the 28th of December, 2001, at five past three. Look at that little bit of history. And the original purchaser paid £19.99 for this. £19.99? Holy crap. Those were the days, weren't they? We can get a figure on a vehicle for 20 quid jeez here we are then here is the canada and the motorcycle now normally at this point i'd say i'm gonna go away and have a bit of a play but it's not really a kind of play with action figure as it's so much as a display piece so i'm gonna pop it out on display for a couple of days and appreciate it from my comfy chair and then come back and share uh, a few review thoughts and take a closer look at it uh, in a day or two's time so um sit tight i'll be back in a few days but for you i'll be back in three two, one, and here it is. And you know what? Considering this set was released more than 20 years ago now, there's an awful lot to like. And it's quite surprising to me, particularly uh, by the standard of McFarlane Toys, how little has changed. Don't get me wrong, there are things that have changed uh, from then till now in the way that they prepare figures, but there's also an awful lot that hasn't changed. But as an overall display piece, this is really rocking it. I would go so far as to say it's shit hot. It looks great. And I'm very, very pleased that I finally managed to get my hands on one. Let's take a closer look at some of the details on it. So I popped Canada off the bike there just so that we can take a closer look at the, uh, you know, the sculpt and the detail and the visual elements of his figure. Uh, obviously, he's been designed, you know, sculpted and engineered for... The sole purpose of sitting on the bike, so there's not really a you know a standing option, unless you want to I don't know do something with <laughs> unless you want to do something with that <laughs> unless you could I don't know there's a diorama or a photo project that <laughs> might require that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's made me laugh. That's give me the giggles. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway it's obviously leather biker gear so the jacket and the trousers uh, all have a suitably kind of leathery look uh leathery leather leathery aesthetic to them which is nice but there's also suitable wear and tear just to kind of tell a little bit about Canada's story we know as fans of the film that this is the gear he wears all day every day or certainly every night when he's out in the town riding his bike getting into brutal and bloody gang battles uh, across the streets of Neo Tokyo so there's wear and tear there's grime possibly even a bit of dried blood in there look is that a bit of dried blood at the top of the thigh here certainly possibly some dried blood here on the jacket not his own of course and uh, so it's all all lovely sculpted and all those paint applications in here like uh, if i just put his arms up uh, with the studs and the zippers on the leather jacket all nicely applied and a wash across the coat and across the trousers and down into the boots just to really give it some lived in feel which is nice uh, and then paint applications here on the boot you can see there around the straps through the buckles and whatnot yeah just all lovely piece of work the attention to detail is second to none 
Uh, so very, very pleased with that aspect. And you can see under the jacket here, even though that's a molded fitted piece of plastic over the top, they've also sculpted the shirt underneath and run a wash over that. He got his little pop stud at the top of his pants there. And the back, oh, check out the back. And there it is across the back, the famous leather jacket embellishment from the movie. Good for health, bad for education, the pill patch on the back of Canada's jacket there. And again, it's super. I mean, if that's a, a, a decal, the words I think might be a decal there. Uh, but if it is, it's applied super neat and tidy. Moves along the creases and the seams of the coat nicely. And then the pill itself is uh, sculpted in by the feel of it. So, yeah, l yeah more fine detail. Look at the, uh, you can see all the seams and folds and creases. Some more nice paint applications there. Really top-notch job. The one area that isn't so hot now, 20 years later, is the head sculpt. It's not, I mean, we've moved a great deal forward when it comes to action figure head sculpting. Although, to be fair, I'm possibly being a bit too overcritical because it still looks pretty good. It's just the little things like, like the paint application on this left eye here isn't quite straight, but the one on the right eye is... The face shape, the skin tone's a bit shaky compared to what we're kind of more accustomed to now. But I, I'll cut it a break because, one, you can clearly identify who the character is. Number two, it's based on an animated movie. So, uh, you know, your photo real face stuff isn't quite as necessary. And three, by the standards of 2001, this is really, really good. So even though I'm kind of looking at it with contemporary eyes and going, yeah. Not so sure uh, the about the head sculpt. It's actually really decent considering what the technology was capable of doing back then. So I'll give them their dues. Uh, the hair, nicely sculpted. He's got his loose goggles that you can, you know, pop around his neck, pop over his eyes, pop over his head. These have obviously had a bit of fade in the box over the years, but that's fine by me. Whatever, that's cool. I don't mind. Uh, so that's really good. One interesting bit is the legs these are curious so we've got the plastic legs down the bottom here there's a boot swivel there's a pinned single joint knee there's a thigh swivel in there obviously uh, there's a limited number of things that you're going to be looking to do with the legs anyway but you can have him mounted on the bike you can have him popping his feet on the floor you, you don't need a great deal of stuff there really to achieve the various looks that you're looking for uh, however this top section is like a, a rubbery molded piece over the top uh, and you can't see the articulation joint underneath here there obviously is one there look um, but in order to keep it uh, unbroken in this section, uh, they've put this rubber piece over the top, which I think is really interesting. Now, to feel, it feels a little bit odd. And what it also does is it means that you've got kind of two different shades, colour tones going on between the two sections there. It doesn't look too bad from the jacket to the top of the trousers, but you can definitely see it. Hang on, if I turn it this way around, you can definitely kind of see the, the difference uh, from there to there although actually under the lights glancing at my monitor screen it doesn't look quite as bad as it does in person but trust me it's it stands out um, but also the engineering there is curious to me um, again I'm judging it by 2022 standards but um, it's an interesting idea it's a nice idea in order to keep from having the brakes in there I, I just think possibly s s superfluous to requirements because you've obviously got a thigh cut in here and the knees anyway that are giving away the game that is a you know a piece of articulated plastic it's a toy at the end of the day uh, but still very impressed very impressed with what i'm looking at there so canada is a thumbs up for sure arguably though the bike is the main feature let's be honest that's the bit that we're all gooey eyed over that's the bit that we all fell in love with when we first saw the movie well for me in the 90s but for some of you older folks the first time around in the 80s and it's, yeah, it's awesome. It's super impressive. Uh, I'm, as a display piece, once again, I'm very, very happy with it. I did do a bit of a comparison next to the action figure, you know, blister pack carded version that I've got as well. And while uh, superficially you might think they're the same, they're not. The, uh, the one that's in the new set, which is at the back here, is longer and taller. And uh, so they might have used the same sort of uh, sculpting files, but this is actually a bigger piece than this piece here, which I think is interesting. But the level of detail is really exciting in it. Obviously, it has to have all the kind of stickers. These are a key part of the kind of visual personality, the visual identity of the bike over and above, obviously, the science fiction 
uh, style uh, and design of it from the movie stroke graphic novel. Uh, so the, these are iconic, of course, uh, recognisable at a glance. You know, if you see an immigrant or a corrupt sticker, the first thing your head goes to, or at least first thing my head goes to, is the Akira motorbike. Uh, these are uh, painted on or printed on. Uh, printed on, I think, yeah. Um, so uh, the nice touches, but you can see all the various kind of bits of battle damage and scrapes, and there's little mud specks up here where the wheels kick the mud up. You can see on the rear wheel as well. Look at the damage here from uh, getting into scrapes around Neo Tokyo. His tires are going a bit bold on the top there, and we've got all these kind of spray effects of mud and dirt. Uh, really lovely touches just to give it, again, some life to tie together with the facts. Tell the story, you know, that this is a piece of kit that he's riding around on every night getting up to no good in, and I really appreciate that. It's the same on the other side. More kind of scrapes and damage and mud sprays and you know, the paintwork is scraped right down to the metal there. Yeah, lovely touches, lovely touches, just again to give it some life, to give it some lived-in character uh, and to sit true to the storyline that it tells. Uh, there's plenty of articulation in the bike as well. The wheels spin. This front unit here can lift up to reveal the engine parts underneath. And these are all got all detailed sculpts in there, all metallically painted with a wash and lovely uh, paint work. Uh, but it allows for a bit of access to the kind of engine compartment there. So you can have it kind of parked up and he's doing some repairs or whatever. Lots of details in the cockpit area as well. Sculpted handlebars, all the paint applications on the buttons and switches there. Look, uh, all nicely done. Lovely jubbly. Uh, this moves too. Uh, so that if you do want to try and, uh, I don't know, pose him in a you know, scraping around the corner or do the famous shot. I'll have a go at doing the famous shot in a minute. Uh, then that's possible to do. A bit dusty there. Um, so yeah, lovely, lovely details all here in the console and stuff and the chair. In the brown leather look there, uh, but again with scrapes and dints and they're all intentional. I know it looks like uh, this is fresh out the box. You saw me unbox it. It looks like I've just been knocking my figure around, but no, it's all intentional to, again, give it that lived in, um, battered character and personality to show that the bike has been frequently in use. It's plastic. It's a whole. It's all plastic, so it feels quite lightweight, and it does have a bit of a cheaper feel to it. Uh, to be fair, though, e even by today's standard, when we've got um, you know Haslabs and what have you being produced, they they still have that same sort of plasticky feel. Uh, but I do believe the paint application and the color choices in the bike mean that it, it's got that sort of motorbike shine to it. It doesn't look plasticky necessarily. Um, I'm quite happy with the level of sheen on it. So um, even though it is, you know, just pure plastic and quite cheap feeling in the hand, the display experience of it, it, it looks like a good spray job, you know, uh, as opposed to uh, lumps of plastic, which I'm quite pleased with. The way that Canada interacts with the bike is quite limited, but to be honest, how <laughs> how many different ways can you have him interact with it? You know, he's he's sitting on his motorbike. Uh, the hands fit around the handlebars. These are a rubbery piece here, so they're flexible enough that you can pop them on and off with ease. You've got a little bit of head articulation in there. Uh, not a great deal, but enough to do some stuff with. You can obviously um, play around with what you want to do with the goggles. I sometimes put them up on his forehead like that. Um, well, a bit neater than that, but you get the idea. Uh, then the leg area, you can see that the thigh cut here allows for placing up on the uh, kickstand there, like that with the uh, hinge in the knee, and then you've got the boot swivel there to do some stuff. It's not quite tall enough, the gap in here, to, to straighten the leg completely and tuck it in. Believe me, I've tried, so you're always going to have his foot sticking out the side there, which is a little bit irksome, because uh, I'd like to be able to sort of get that foot properly in there uh, like he holds it in the movie but i've tried i've tried you know lifting the panel up uh, swiveling it completely like that but it, yeah it's not it's not working and uh, so yeah you've got no choice but to have the foot sticking out the side there but what that leg articulation does do is give you options for you know like putting it out on the floor like this like he's in a resting position parked up uh, oh uh, the kick there is a little um stand underneath it actually you see here that kicks out, uh, but this is, oh, hang on a minute, check out this extra detail underneath, I didn't even think about pointing that out, 
Yeah, the attention to detail continues into the most obscured part of the figure. And kudos to McFarlane for that. Defo. Oh, I'll tell you what. Why does he need pegs in the bottom of his feet? Oh, I bet that's because it's reuse boots from the action figure. Yeah, I think they're the same boots, aren't they? Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but those have got peg holes in them too. Interesting. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Oh, the stand underneath. Yeah, so it's so heavy. The bike with Canada on it is so heavy that the stand doesn't really help much <laughs> if you're trying to use it to hold the bike up. So what you tend to find is you're more at a kind of resting angle like that with a one foot down on the ground so what was i saying oh yeah the um the stand underneath so yeah the stand underneath it's it's on a little hinge here uh and i don't find it helps a great deal sometimes like if you angle it too far that way that yeah there you go you can see the stand just folds and uh, so you have to sort of position it like so and then i've had him sort of with his foot out like like uh, like that on the shelf so the articulation and the way canada interacts with the bike is quite limited but i suppose let's face facts it's designed more to be a display piece with some slight bits of articulation than it is a, a full-on action figure i may have preferred something a little bit more dynamic so that i can do some more kind of in motion type stuff <laughs> But let's be honest, it's going to sit on people's shelves as a display piece like that more often than not. And as a budget alternative to like an expensive resin statue or something, uh, it's more than perfectly suits my needs. Uh, I love it to bits. I'm really, really happy with it. And again, I'll reiterate, I'm looking at this in 2022. It's a 20-year-old figure and it still stands up. It really does still stand up. It's also very true of the kind of McFarlane ethos. They, I've said it before on other reviews, they very much make their figures to be display pieces with a bit of articulation rather than action figures that make for good display pieces, if you get what I mean. So it kind of ties up to their philosophy. But yeah, overall, a very lovely piece of work. Oh, I said I was going to try and do the sliding shots. So like, give that a go. Yeah, not quite enough articulation in these legs to get it to bend the knee up enough. Uh, but pretty close there if I do that like that. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Still, damn fine display piece. So there we are then, folks. A bit of a retro review from the Mod Extra Games and Collectibles uh, channel there. Not a brand new action figure, but still stands up really well considering the standard of some of the stuff I've unboxed and reviewed that was released this year on this channel. So... Uh, I've got to give kudos once again to the team over at McFarlane Toys. I'm very, very impressed. And I'm so happy to have one finally in my collection. It's one of those kind of collections that has just lived with me forever and I've just crapped on with again and again and again and again. So, yeah, super pleased to have this in the collection. Let me know in the comments down below if, if retro reviews of this nature are something that you will find of more interest from the channel. I generally focus on the newer stuff when it comes to the action figures and the retro tends to be more around the comics and the trading cards. But um, if there's a demand, I can start digging the box boxes out the garage and see what fun old figures I've got and just give them a, a looking over on camera with you guys if if that's what you'd like but otherwise uh, I've been Chris from Mod Extra Games and Collectibles it's been a real pleasure to have you join me to take a look at this McFarlane Toys Canada and Motorbike from Akira please do take a moment to give me a thumbs up like down below it takes you just a second but it means ever so much to me and if you're not already subscribed to the channel then I would really really love you forever and ever if you do so and in fact a quick thank you to all those who have subscribed recently. You folks are awesome. Uh, so have a great day, and I'll see you again around these parts sometime soon. Ta-ra now.